Looks like it's that time again. I'm your host, John Zadar. This is Wednesday, May 25th, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do here is I share my DD with you on OTC and penny stocks that I see running through the day for one reason or another, and I got some today. All the stocks I have today, well, they got a lot in common. First, they all had news presses, all have deals, all had a lot of trades, and all had good gains. And I think you're going to want to see them. Come on. All right, that first stock we're going to take a look at right now is VGFC, the very good food company. And of course, we're going to be doing our initial due diligence on these OTC stocks over here at the otcmarkets.com website, where we're at now. I come here for one reason. It's never outdated. Feeder and the SEC update this site every single day. Talk about making things easy. Now, VGFC, we're not going to get all that information because it's not an OTC stock. Mm -mm. This is on the NASDAQ. She finished a day just under 30 cents with 118% gains. Now, I got to tell you folks, that is a dirt cheap price on the NASDAQ. To get on the NASDAQ, you can't have a price any cheaper than three bucks. And you're allowed to fall down to a dollar without any jeopardy. But once you go under a dollar, the clock starts ticking and you got to get that price up over a dollar. And if you don't, you could be delisted or kicked down to the OTC and they don't want that. So you can see a lot of motivation around a stock when it's this cheap on the NASDAQ. So that's one reason to look at it. But the news today, oh, that's the real reason to look at it. So what does this company do? Well, the very good food company produces plant-based foods that are nutritious and taste delicious. They have two different brands. They have their good butcher's brand and the very good cheese brand. And they do work in different countries, Canada, America, China, and you'll see some of that in the news. But today they had news come out and they just made a deal. And boy, was there some excitement around this. So what was the relative volume around this Canadian company? Woo, not bad. She normally does just under a million shares a day. Today, she did 133 million. So that's more than 133 times her normal share volume. What is the share structure? Outstanding shares, we got 118 million. This is where I normally get my float, the unrestricted shares. We've got nothing here. So I did a search. 85 million is what most sites seem to agree on. So we're going to go with that. 85 million. Financials, we're probably not going to see anything here. One, because it is a Canadian company. They can have their financials in their own country. Two, it's on the NASDAQ, so they don't even have to put them here. And disclosures, well, we're probably not going to get a lot here either. Um, they did have a 6K come out today. I'm not quite sure what this is about. Let's just take a quick glance here. Um, I didn't do all that highlighting. Who the heck did all that high? Oh, that's the news. Well, that's the news. So they actually put it in a filing as well as the news. Speaking of the news then, let's go take a look at it. So it's kind of funny here. The news, as you, now it's come. This bottom news was coming up blank. I couldn't get to it. And that is actually where our news is for today. Up here, the news doesn't go any further than October 2021. And all of this news is for October. A very, very busy month for them. They were uh, letting us know that they were applying to list on NASDAQ, which they did here in October. So they told us in October and they did it in October. Wow, talk about a fast up list. They say that they are distributing their products through Uber Eats and DoorDash back then. They launched a pilot program in China and their U.S. retail distribution jumped 126% and experiences record sales. So they were having a booming end of the year last year. Then you got news down here, and this isn't all about them, but most of it is. But this is the piece of news that came out today. So let's take a look at this. They tell us here that the Very Good Food Company is pleased to announce it has increased retail distribution across Canada with low-blah companies. The company's products are now available in more than 2,000 stores across North America with additional retail expansion forecasted for the summer of 2022 right around the corner. Now, these are some of their products that they've got. Cajun sausage, bratwurst sausage, meatballs, very good steak that comes in a two-pack. They got barbecued spare ribs, come in multiple flavors, smoky barbecue, maple bourbon barbecue, and southern gold barbecue. So, this is what they do. They make fake meats and they make 
fake Jesus and they're selling them around the world, which is becoming big business, folks. And I'm telling you what, the science has gotten really good because I remember a veggie burger used to have full beans in it. So <laughs> this actually looks like a steak. It actually looks like a rib. I don't know how they do it. But the company was flying today, and I think they're going to continue growing. I think as the price of beef and all these meats go up, I think as wheat becomes tough to get, there's going to be a lot of fake food products. I hate to call them that, but they're they're replacement food products, whether they be uh, baby formula, meats, cheeses, whatever, sugars. We're coming up with all these replacement foods, and there seems to be a huge market for it. Let's go take a look at that chart. As is usual, we are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart for VGFC, and we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Keep your account open, and you can use it too. So our six-month chart here shows a high about five and a half months ago of $3.34, and yesterday it looks like we had a low bubble of $0.13. Cents. She has been under the 200 the entire time. She's had a couple strong pokes through it, but just came right back down. She's had a strong poke through it today, too. Now, I don't believe that low bubble is anything special. I don't think she's bouncing off that low bubble because looking at the chart, these are all low bubbles, aren't they? As it fell, every single one of these was a low bubble coming down. So I think it was just coincidence that that low bubble was there because you had to have a low bubble there, and it jumped with the news today. And boy, did it jump. Got way above that 200, and I think it is just about on top of it right now. The technicals are hot, but they are cooling off just a wee bit. 20-day, one-hour view. All right, we see she did break through with a high jump here. Boy, she got up to 40 cents, and she was down here at 23. Holy cow, what a jump that was, and it came down super duper fast. Speaking of coming down fast, once she broke that 200, she came all the way down here. It took a heavy fall here and a heavy fall here, but the news is what we're concerned with, and again, the technicals were hot, but they are all pulling back right now. As you can see, it looks like she's lost, hmm, Maybe 50%. Let's come on down to the five day, five minute. All right, I'm going to draw a surge line down here. I like to draw lines where a surge begins and where it ends. And it ends at the high bubble. <laughs> and then I find the middle. Now you can do it mathematically, getting the numbers from the top and the bottom, or you can eyeball it like I'm doing. Now, the reason I do that. I expect a stock after a very strong surge to fall back 50%. I absolutely do. I expect it to give back 50%. Now, that used to bug me until I realized it was normal. And if it holds at least 50%, I expect it's probably going to want to grow some more. But if it falls beneath this, now I don't mean right underneath it, I mean down here. It can be hanging on like a monkey underneath, or it can be sitting on top like a king. As long as it is around that line, I'm content with it. And we are there. We are definitely there right now, sitting right at the line, the 50% gain. Now, if she falls down underneath it, there's a very good chance she'll either go to the next strongest SMA underneath her, or all the way back down to where she started. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the SMA on this time frame. You could have an SMA back here on the 20 day that's closer, you know? So it's just any SMA that's close to it, that's probably where it would fall. So we had a solid gain here, folks. She went from 15 cents up to 46 cents. That's 300% gain from the bell. And that happened at, uh, what is that? Nine, no, 10, 10. 10, 10. We got 10 minutes after 10. Wow. See, I'm normally out of these at 10 o'clock in the morning. If I got into this, which I didn't, if I, and I did post this news. I posted this on my Discord group, on my Facebook page. I don't think I posted it on Twitter, but I did post it this morning. I did see the news and I thought it was pretty good. Well, if I had gotten in, I'd have been out right about, oh, gee whiz, about here. Yeah, probably there because I normally get out of these at 10 o'clock because at 10, 10 05, the market normally takes a dip. That didn't take a dip. So I probably would have left a lot on the table. However, the reason I do that is when it is running at 10 o'clock, I expect that dip. Now, I may have even gotten out a wee bit earlier on this one, but looking at the technicals, to be honest, I have rules. If it goes over a certain percentage, 
go for the sell and do it while it's rising up. So I'm getting gains as I'm putting in my order or I'm out by 10 in the morning because of the dip. But if I am looking at the technicals and I see she is ripping like this and I don't even see a pullback, well, of course, I'm going to ride that puppy as far as I can ride it. And this ripped good. She held most of her gains for about an hour there, fell down through all of her SMAs. Thank goodness for the 50% rule. The Fibonacci, yeah, right there in the middle. You can also draw one in the middle between these two blocks and these two blocks. They're relevant too. And when I say relevant, I mean leave this line here and a month down the road, if the price is anywhere near that line, that line will come into play and it'll bounce off it or get stuck up underneath it. I guarantee it. So do I think this company is going to continue to grow? I do. I do. I think that they've gotten into the public's eye now. They were kind of under the radar. Now, I'm not saying they're going to surge, but they won are on the NASDAQ. They're not on the OTC. So there's a lot of people looking at this. And these, these new types of foods that are being made with vegetables that look like other types of foods are getting very, very popular. And if they can keep the price right in these stores, they could sell a ton of this stuff. And it is at what? 29, almost 30 cents right now, which is super cheap, folks. That is a ridiculous price on the NASDAQ. So I would see how long they were that low. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at that. Let's look at how long they have been under a dollar. Oh my God, I got to go back. This isn't good, folks. <laughs> All right, dollar, dollar, dollar. Right there. So we are looking at November. November 28th. I think you got six months. I don't know. I would have to look into this again because I normally trade OTC. I've been playing the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange more because the volume is so low on the OTC and the activity on the major exchanges is still hot, at least hot enough to make some money. So this has been there for January, February, March, April, May. Wow, that's seven months. Folks, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here. I would look into this and see how long a stock can be under a dollar on the NASDAQ because this has been under a dollar for a long time, which could be a high motivating factor for this thing to shoot. It could shoot up very quickly just to make that mark. I'm not quite sure how, but it could. So I keep my eye on VGFC. She's got a lot of things going for her, bad and good that could get this price to rise. Let's go take a look at the next deal maker. This next stock, it too is not on the OTC market. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. This is BKSY, Black Sky Technology, Inc. Finished the day at $2.33 with 97% gains. Now, they've got no description here, but I found a description in their news, and it's pretty informative. Black Sky is a leading provider of real-time geospatial intelligence. Black Sky delivers on-demand, high-frequency imagery, monitoring, and analytics of the most critical and strategic locations, economic assets, and events on Earth. Black Sky designs, owns, and operates one of the industry's leading low-Earth orbit small satellite constellations optimized to capture imagery cost efficiently where and when our customers need it. They're spy satellites. Black Sky Spectra artificial intelligence software platform processes data from Black Sky's constellation and from other third-party sensors to develop the critical insights and analytics that our customers require. Speaking of their customers, Black Sky is relied upon by U.S. and international government agencies, commercial businesses, and organizations around the world. Black Sky is headquartered in Herdon, Virginia, and is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So that is what they do. And there was news out today that is exactly all about that, working with the government with their Constellation satellites. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Another huge explosive one. We are doing about 613,000 shares a day on the New York Stock Exchange. Today, she did 148 million. I can't calculate it, folks. That's like 170 times her normal volume. Great. All right. Again, we've got no float over here. We have 120 million outstanding. I checked this out. Looks like it's about 57 million in the float. Not bad. Not great, but that's not a bad float at all. Financials. What do we got over here? Well, they got money. Sure do. Last year, they finished off. 
Got to take those three zeros, put that behind there. $34 million. Holy cow, but it cost them more than that. So they were in debt. So they lost money, even though they made $34 million. All of them were right back out, plus some. And what about their quarterly? Well, they've actually got some money coming into their pockets these last two quarters. They're doing $13 million and they put out $11 million, So they got to keep about $3 million there. So looks like things are turning around. But the news today, yeah, the news today has definitely turned things around. Disclosures, well, that is actually where we're going to take a look at this news, folks. They do have a news press out. Let me see. Am I in the right place? Disclosures. Yeah, but this isn't a page I'm used to seeing. What the heck is this? Well, thank goodness I already had it up. There is a news press out for this, but the news press doesn't cover all the details. The money. They don't talk about the money at all in the news press. They talk about all the fancy work that this company does. So I just jumped into the filing, which wasn't there this time. I don't know why that is, but I found it and I got it right here in front of us. On May 22nd, 2022, Black Sky Technology entered into a multi-year firm fixed price contract with the National Reconnaissance Office, an agency of the United States intelligence community. The NRO contract is effective May 23rd, 2022 with a five-year base subscription starting with a value of $85.5 million for the company's imagery services. The total contract with options is valued up to $1 billion over the course of a five-year period. The description of the statement of works includes intelligent points, area imagery data collection to support military intelligent requirements, as well as theater direct downlink to non-commercial government defined fixed or transferable data terminals. Whew, a lot of words there. So you've got this company, they've got this five-year contract with the United States intelligence community so that they can take pictures of whatever their customers want with crisp clarity and keep them doing what it is they want to do. And they're going to get a $85 million payment for the first five years, but they can get up to a billion dollars if they meet all the criteria of what they need to do over a 10 year period. That is really what this is. It's a 10 year contract with the intelligence community of the United States. And there's your news folks. That's what it's all about. That's why it's ran. So let's go look at that chart. You'd swear to God we were looking at an OTC company, wouldn't you? This is a New York Stock Exchange company, but look at this. We got a high bubble in this corner, low bubble in that corner, running underneath the 200 all the time. Not a whole lot of difference. That goes to show you folks that all the markets are suffering right now in case you didn't know it. The only difference is they still have volume and the OTC market doesn't. So this is where the money's at right now. So we have a high bubble back here of $13.20 and a low bubble of $1.00. That critical line again, this is a New York Stock Exchange stock. They can't get under that dollar. And that's where the bounce happened. Not much of a bounce, but enough to keep it above that dollar. Now, I want you to take a look at the yearly chart. I don't know what the deal is, but she was flatlining here. Literally flatlined for months. There's the high bubble. Once she hit that high, it was downhill ever since. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. She is under the 200 started falling away from the 50 here, hit that low bubble at earnings, although earnings don't look good, maybe that's why it fell, but it bounced off that dollar, got above the 50, and it needed that, hit the 200, hugged the 200 underneath until today, and look at the volume. There is nothing here to even look at, and look at that volume. Holy cow, that is strong. Technicals are now starting to pull back after ripping most of the day. And we have a pullback here after market hours. Let's come in closer to see that. Five day, five minute. Real flat here. Just hugging the 200. There's that itty bitty tiny bounce there. And you can see when the news came out. Yeah, it was about... Uh, where we got there? 10.15. 10.15 in the morning. So if you had been monitoring the news... This was doing absolutely nothing until the news came out. And when it did, it shot off. We're on a five-minute chart here, folks. So this took off. In the first five minutes, it jumped from, uh, let's just call that $1.20 up to $1.61. 
Woo! In five minutes. Ten minutes, it was up to $1.73. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 25 minutes, it had gone all the way to 216. So it had gone a dollar already. About 90% gains in 25 minutes. But that was just the start of a run, wasn't it? That was not the finish. And one would have thought that when she came down here, she was done. But no, this thing bounced off her 10. She didn't even need to come down to the 20 or anything else. That's how light this was. A lot of enthusiasm around this stock. And then at the end of the day, it fell. Now, this is on the major exchanges, and today was a big day. There were Fed minutes that came out today, a lot of anticipation waiting for them, and they came out at 2 o'clock. And the truth of the matter is, every time the Feds come out and tell us something, they're really stroking us just the right way because the market rips as soon as they're done talking to us. If you remember the last time when they told us about the rate hikes for taxes, well, as soon as they ran that day, the very next day, it fell. I mean, it fell everything back all the way down. So we had that run waiting for the Fed minutes. That's probably the Fed minutes right there. And then everybody got excited after the Fed minutes. Didn't say any real bad news, though it really wasn't good news. And then it started to fall away. And it is still falling after market hours. So we don't know where this is going to go. Technicals say she's turning around right now. You can see the bowl right there. She is coming around on her MACD on the five minute. We hit a floor down here. We are in the basement. She's coming up out of that. Again, in the red danger zone, Will Robinson coming out of that too. So BKSY haven't been making a lot of money. Revenues are coming in, but they're not getting to keep any. Is this going to be any different? $84 million, how much of it will they get to keep? Is there any different value from this customer to that customer? I don't know. $1 billion. Now, they said they had other products. I don't quite know what all of that entails. There was a second disclosure that came out right behind this one, and it is more information. It complements this and puts more details to it, and there may be facts in there. But the company did make a huge deal, and they are at a rock bottom price right now. They too need to pick up. Right now, they're at $2.33, so they did a real darn good job today. Are they worth more? I really don't know. I haven't dug into the DD, and I don't know if this stock is going to be able to grow in the climate of the market right now. So do your DD on BKSY. It was a great deal, but is it enough to carry it in this climate? All right, let's go take a look at the next stock. Finally, an OTC stock. This is AppSwarm, ticker SWRM. You've probably heard of them. They were very popular. The only reason they're not popular is because the market's cooled down and none of these hot stocks are really hot anymore, at least not now. She finished the day at 0024 and looks like she lost her gains at the end of the day as well. She is now down to 11% gains. She is on the pink tier, but she has limited information. That means she's late on one or more of her filings. We'll be able to figure that out looking down here at Disclosure, see if it's serious or not. Now, if they're late for too long, they can get pulled off of the open market and you can't buy or sell their shares for the most part. Now, they're not delisted. They're put into a penalty box, a timeout. This gives them time to get caught up on their filings. Once they are caught up, they'll be put back on the open market and it'll be business as usual. They do have a verified profile and a transfer agent. And if they get too close to being kicked off the market, right here. Right here is where you'll see the words grace period show up. Grace period is a new thing the OTC market does, and it lets you know that the company has 15 days to get those filings in or they're going to be gone. So that gives you a heads up to maybe sell your stock before they get pulled off because you don't know for fact that they're going to file anytime soon and come back. So it's a good heads up. So what does App Swarm do? Well, they work with apps, swarms of them. Literally, they are an I mean, you look at what they do. They do everything. They're working with aerospace. They're working with NFTs. They've got cryptocurrencies. They've just got apps for all sorts of different people. They help other companies with their apps. They develop their own apps. They test apps. So they're all about apps. That should be their name, all about apps. And today the company had news. They made a deal. So what was the relative volume around that deal today? 
Not as much as the others. She normally does 4.2 million shares. Today, she did 11 million shares. And it is a strong kick up, but not as strong as the others. Her share structure. All right, again, another one that doesn't give us the float. Good thing I'm on top of this, folks. I've already looked this one up too. They got 1.2 billion outstanding. They have 1.1 billion in the float. So no, it's not a great float. Financials, I don't know if they're making money. A little bit. Those three zeros behind there gives them $16,000. And look, it didn't cost them a penny for it. So they got to keep all $16,000. That's 100% profit. That's great. The other company did $34 million and didn't have any profit. Not so good. Quarterly, we got anything recent? Dun, da, da, da. No, we got nothing recent. That's probably why they're late. That's probably why they're pink limited. Let's go see those disclosures. So this is the time period. Oh, it looks like uh, 517. So that was like a week ago. That was for this period. That is March 31st, 2020 seconds. That's the period they filed for. It was a quarterly report, so they don't need an attorney letter. Uh, supplemental information. There's the attorney letter for 1231, and there's the annual report. Seems to me it's all here now. Looks to me like it's all here. This should be catching up. It should turn over. Unless there's something I'm unaware of, it normally has to do with finances, and nothing is missing there right now. So hopefully we'll see that change here real soon. And, oh, those are real old. Look at that, 2013. All right, so let's go see what the news is. So is this the new news? It is. So as you can see, they work with NFTs, cyber war games. They're working with the uh, metaverse, aerospace industry, uh, NFTs with Board Yacht Club. Th that's their thing. They just work with apps and all sorts of places. You go down through the news here, folks, and you'll get lots of information about different things that they're working with. However, the news that came out today is what we are focused on. That is right here. Yes, today's news. Let's go take a look at that. So they tell us here that AppSwarm Corp announced it has entered into a channel partner agreement with Tego Cyber Inc. to make the Tego Guardian cyber threat application to the energy and aerospace industries in the Midwestern United States. The ransom attack on the Colonial Pipeline in May 2021 had a huge impact on the industry. In February 2022, it also reported that the European oil facilities were hit by cyber attacks. With this agreement in place, AppSwarm now has the resources to create a new revenue stream in the emerging cyber threat intelligence market. Tego Guardian is different from other threat intelligence applications in that it provides a client cybersecurity team with a detailed who, what, when, and where of the potential cyber threat. Other applications may identify that something is malicious, but do not provide any additional information. How can you fix it, right? It is then up to the client cybersecurity team to research the threats to establish what actions need to be taken. The Tego Guardian automates the process, increasing the efficiency of security operations, thereby saving time and money. So there you go. Another application working with cybersecurity threats on oil fields, on uh, aerospace, any of these sort of things because it is happening and they are affecting the economy when they happen. They just don't affect the company. They affect the economy, maybe even the entire country. So this is another important foothold that they've gotten in the market along with all of the others that they've got. This is a company would be worth me doing a video on, but also you doing your DD. Let's go take a look at that chart. See how it acted today. I know it was higher than 11% when it started. That is a six-month, four-hour chart for Swarm, and it looks like an OTC stock. High bubble in this corner, low bubble in that corner. We went from 2.2 cents down to double zero one nine. That is more than a thousand percent gains. Now, her ultimate high, her high of all time is 6.3 cents. She did this back in February of 2021. The stimulus month, the month we all got those checks. Man, everybody was in the market that month. We hit highs like we have never seen in February of 2021. And it has been falling ever since then. And she has been under the 200 most of this time. And the volume is really nothing 
supreme to talk about right now. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. So her high here is down to 0039. And there's that low of 0019. She has been falling ups and downs, ups and downs, tagging that 50 day SMA as she fell. Today doesn't look like anything great, really. She had a good bounce early in the morning. She jumped from 0021 up to 0029, which is about a 50% gain, uh, maybe 45% gain, and then she totally fell away. The technicals, everything's pulled back right now, folks. Everything looks pretty lame. Let's look at that five day, five minute. All right, she's got some huge pokes in here, just out of the clear blue, right? Some wild action, huge falls. Boy, she is just all over the place. And here comes our 200-day SMA. Finally, something besides the 50-day SMA, which is really what she's playing to all the time. But now that the 200's here, what'd she do? Whoop! She elevated herself. She kicked off of the 50 and up onto the 200. And now she's playing up here. And I expect she's going to be just as goofy up here too. Until things calm down. But you got to remember, there's very little volume on the OTC market. It's like popcorn. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. You never know when the kernel is going to go. So right now, playing the OTC market with any fluidity is very difficult. You can see what you got going on here. We're jumping top to bottom on this screen all over the place. Now, I like Swarm. They've got a lot of good products. They're all working. Everything's happening. I don't know why they're not making more money. Hopefully, that's going to be changing here soon. Jumping into the 10Q or the uh, 10K, maybe there's some good, strong, solid information in there about what's going on. Because right now, I see they've got a lot, but we don't see a lot actually coming in. How are they making money from all that they are doing? So, I like the company. The chart, not so much, and I really don't see a turn up yet for it. Hey, we got another OTC stock. This is Human Unitech International, ticker HMNU. Finished the day at 0075 with over 78% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, has a verified profile and a transfer agent, so she looks good. Now, I'm not real crazy about this business description. It seems a little confusing. You'll get a little more insight looking at the news. But what they say here, project finance, management, and development for sustainability, medical, wellness, and green energy, a joint venture, and a development of real estate-backed cryptocurrency. <laughs> it's not real clear. But the news that came out today, it was real clear and exciting. What was the relative volume around this company today? big. We went from 860,000 shares to almost 50 million. So you're looking at well over 50 times her normal share volume. Security details, her share structure. Our float is here. We got 392 million in the float. Not a great float, but it's not going to kill you. It is what it is. What are their financials here? Well, they were doing $325,000 at the end of last year. Their most recent quarterly not here. Maybe it's over in the disclosures. Let's take a look. Yep, there it is. 516 for the period of March 3031. So the last one we looked at put out their quarterly report on the 17th, but it had not yet shown up. The one that was pink limited and we expect it to go current now because it is there. This one's here too. So I would expect that this will catch up soon enough as well. Now I'm going to jump into this. Not for long. We just want to look at some numbers. Ooh, what a nice landing. Look at that. All right, we're going to look at the total assets. That is $22.4 million at the end of last year and now. Not a lot's changed. Revenues. Uh, last quarter of 2021, they did $325,000. This last quarter, they did $385,000. So they are increasing. And they made just over a quarter million dollars to keep of that money. So they are doing better with their revenues. Let's take a look at that news now. So this is all the news that they bring in here. And this goes back five years to 2016, 17, 19, and 21. And I do want to take a look at a couple pieces of news here that came from last year. And then I want to look at the news that came out today. These two here will give you a feel for what the company is about. So let's look at this first one that came out May 22nd. 
They tell us here that the company has announced a strategic agreement with a Switzerland and United States based medical technology company, TechVSA. The agreement with TechVSA, a Swiss well being company with offices in North Carolina, through their MSK Kinesis division, will provide for distribution for the TechVSA in Canada and the United States. We'll tell you what this is all about here in just a second. The first launch will be the Tech V Wellness Coach in USA and Canada, which with revolutionary treatment for the improvement of the health and well-being of both human beings and animals. The Tech V Wellness Coach is able to provide each cell of our body with the right frequency of electromagnetic waves that allows it to feed itself and to attract the substances necessary for its functions by electromagnetic osmosis and repel harmful substances. Something else, right? It is not only technology that invigorates the body, but also a system that rebalances the energies of our nervous system to reduce stress and increase cellular longevity. And that's a big deal right now, longevity, living longer. You'd be amazed how much money people are spending on that. That next piece of news we want to take a look at came out a month later. Uh, the company announces strategic agreement with to Netty Trade on its green energy project with Cedar Green Energy. That one is right here, June, uh, July 13th it came out. They signed an agreement with To Netty Trade for its green energy plants in Porto Taurus, Italy. The agreement provides for To Netty Trade to deliver 600 tons per month of plastic waste to be recycled. Cedar Green Energy states that every ton of dry, clean plastic will generate 600 liters of eco diesel and generate over 2 million US dollars annually. Additionally, the Tunetti Agreement qualifies for up to 700,000 euro in grants to Cedar Green Energy for its recycling plants in Porto Torres, Italy. So there you go. There's their green energy right there. And the last piece of news we want to look at. The company announces three strategic marketing agreements for its HMNU MSK Kinesis medical equipment with initial minimum annual orders exceeding $30 million. Let's look at that one. Now, this is actually pretty short. They don't go into a lot of details. They've made three deals here all on May 24th. They signed an agreement with Campania del Cabello as the exclusive agent for Europe of the MSK Kinesis Equipment and Treatment Protocols for Veterinary Medicine. They also signed an agreement with Professor Dr. Francisco to market the sports medicine equipment, the MSK Kinesis. And they signed an agreement with Dr. Amir Ghazi in Milano. And I'm not quite sure what that one was all about. The three entities have agreed to annual sales of 900 of the Kinesis medical machines at a minimum cost of $39,000 each for a minimum revenue of $30 million. The MSK Kinesis is for treatment of Parkinson's disease, prevention of blood clots and thrombosis dysfunctions. So they are into the medical, they are into the green energy, and they just made three more deals, and they look like they're all in Europe, Italy and all of Europe. So this is a big deal. I don't understand the science behind it, but they are just getting more and more going on. And the stock looks pretty good today with 78% uh, gains, and I think it was higher. Let's go see. Yep, that looks like an OTC stock. This is HMNU, six month, four hour chart. Got a high bubble in this corner, just about two cents, and a low bubble in that corner, double zero, double three. She has been under the 200 predominantly, but she has broke through it on many occasions with a lot of strength. And remember, this company's got what? Over 300 million shares. So that's not holding her back from moving. And let me give you an idea of what we got going here. Uh, that's going from about 8 up to 20. So that's 250% gains. This one here is going from 5 up to 12. There again, 250% gains. That's going to be about 250%. And what's this one? 3 up to 10. That's 300% at its low to high. So 300 
a million shares is not slowing this stock down at all. Volume, real strong today. Technicals are warm. They were really strong, but they are pulling back right now. But they're not cold. They're still warm. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. What the heck is that? Is that the 200-day SMA? I thought I drew a red line in there. Come on, that is flat. That is totally straight. And thank goodness the price is sitting right on the 200 right now. The price has been moving underneath it, but it isn't moving the 200. And she's been paying homage to the 50 here, got over it, hit a low bubble here, an extreme low bubble actually. It's out of place. And then we had news. So on top of the low bubble came the news and she shot. But it looks like she's given up uh, maybe 50%. Let's go take a look at that five day, five minute. I'm going to draw a surge line here from the bottom of that surge to the top of that surge. Cut it in half. About right there, is it? Oh, she's there. She's there. So she did lose her 50%. She went up, came down, landed right on it. Now, I've eyeballed it. Could be a little higher, a little lower, but I'm close. And so is it. It is right there above it, so I anticipate this to hold its gains. That's the first thing I feel when it lands on this and sits there. It's going to hold its gains. And then I presume it should, could take off and get some more growth. So from that standpoint, she's sitting in a good spot. She is on the 50 right now, and I don't think we have a 200 yet. Nope, no 200. However, on that one hour, right, on that one hour, she is sitting on the 200 perfectly ready to jump and the 10 just crossed the 200 so things are looking promising here back down to that five day five minute i was looking at the technicals we do have the blue on top it looks like it wants to cross over if it drops anymore there could be a negative crossover here but it could easily turn and start going up the technicals are warm we are in the neutral area but it's not cold right now They've made some deals. They've got a lot of deals going on over there in Europe to help distribute this MSK Kinesis machine that helps your cellular structure uh, stay healthy and attract what it needs so that you can have a long life. And they're selling this in Canada, the United States, and now they've got these distributors over in Europe. And they are not just doctors, but they're veterinarians too. So they've got a lot going on Hopefully, we'll start seeing some money pour into this company, which should help this stock. But keep in mind, it is on the OTC and volume is light. It's like a hose that's been pinched. You never know when the volume is going to pop and when it's not. And you can't tell if it's going to go up or down when it moves like that. You need that fluidity. So look for the volume. That's really the greatest indicator you're going to get on the OTC market right now. So I do like this company. I've never heard of this science before. It sounds real interesting. I'll probably do some more DD as you should too. So I told you to get a variety. You had some NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and OTC. And every single one of them had a deal today. Good deals as far as I'm concerned. They should help the companies with their bottom lines. And some of them really need it. What we've got to concern ourselves with is market sentiment. You may find a company that I just showed you that you really like and want to invest in. But there's a good chance it could fall even more. Who knows right now? So know how much you want to buy of that company, how many shares or how much money, and only buy a portion of it now. Not knowing where the market's going to go, it could go down. You'll want to take advantage of that. Buy another portion when it's down. And if it falls again, buy another portion. When the market finally turns, you're going to have a great price and you're going to get a bigger payout. There's a lot happening out there, folks bad and good. And your DD will help you know which is which. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.